Hey everyone, welcome to this video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maike and if you think I look a little bit crazy, that my eyes look uneven and all that, I just uh, filmed a dupe tutorial trying to trying out a f almost a full face of like drugstore makeup on one side, high-end makeup on the other side and seeing how, whether they might be dupes and I think I found it quite a few so I will, be make sure, I will be making sure to link it in the eye above but that's not what this video is about. This video is all about highlighters. Someone, a I asked what you wanted to see during this everyday May thing and someone recommended that I ranked something and I was like, you know what I would like to rank? My highlighters. I have quite a few here and there are going to be 38 different highlighters that I'm going to be mentioning in this video. So because there are so many, Let's just get straight to it. So we're gonna start at the bottom and I only just recently finished uh, posting my decluttering video and I haven't bought a whole lot of new stuff since that video went live. So that is also why um, my makeup or my highlighter collection is now at a point where I'm like, yeah, I like all of these. So ranking them was quite hard, but I did get one highlighter quite recently by Essence. This is the My Glow Passion Highlighter and this I felt was just not a great product. This is very chalky, very, you know, it looks very nice when you try it on, when you swatch it as well. Like it looks, there's a swatch of it. I'm not sure if I'm too far away for you to see this, uh, but that's the swatch right there. Once it goes on, it's just not that shimmery. It's a little bit chalky and powdery as well, which quite frankly is just a little bit of a shame. So this was just one that, you know, the packaging of this is so super duper cute. So you're like, wow, this should be a great product. But then the product inside nah, could have been better essence. Um, another product that I wanted to put in my bottom uh, part because it's just that one I don't really use a whole lot and it's this highlighter by Catrice This is their highlighting powder in Stardust and I only I only keep this around because it used to be one of my favorite highlighters And they no longer sell this uh, this has been discontinued quite a while and for a drugstore um, Highlighter from that era you could say it's quite nice, but also this I feel compared to other highlighters that are out on the market right now it is just a little bit on the chalky and powdery side it definitely has a little bit more of a sheen than uh, the essence one there you have it you see the difference a little bit there uh, and it's much more of like a white highlighter as well so for me that's why those are at the bottom because they are just not my favorites anymore I only really keep the uh, Catrice one uh, just for references uh, whenever they do new highlighters such as this uh, this is their new 3d glow highlighter this is in the shade icy glaze and this is a very nice white toned highlighter this is a much more intense like gel texture it's like gel to powder almost and this is really really nice and much more intense but to be quite fair with a lot of these essence and Catrice products what happens with me most of the time is that I buy them to try them for videos and to compare other things to and all that but in my daily life I just don't reach a whole lot for these uh, I always keep a couple around as you can see this has a really nice shine to it it has a very nice texture it's quite intense as well really nice product I do have to say that I have to put it out there but to be quite fair uh, it's not my favorite in terms of the selection that I have here I mean there's 38 of them here also in the bottom for me is this Kat Von D eyeshadow in the shade Thunderstruck and not because I don't like this highlighter or the shade. Of course Kat Von D is currently quite controversial um, and this is an eyeshadow that you can no longer get. So the reason why I'm also putting it in the bottom part of my highlighter ranking is because A it's Kat Von D and two it's been discontinued so you can no longer get this. And it is a really nice shade. It has a nice duochrome to it. 
and it's definitely more of a highlight for me than an eyeshadow, I would say. So that is the Kat Von D. Makeup Revolution do some really, really nice highlighters too. But I do have to say that with this bulky packaging, I just don't tend to reach for them. This is their Triple Baked Highlighter in Radiance. And it's a really nice sort of like peachy shift highlighter. Uh, it does have some noticeable sparkle in this pan as well. So that's something I'm also not a fan of. But this is rather pretty, I have to say. So it's right here at the bottom. I really am not doing a good job showing you these swatches, am I? Uh, but it is right here. It's very close to my skin tone, so it is a little bit harder to see because of that reason. We have Nabla. Nabla do some really, really nice highlighters. This is in the shade Angel. It's a really nice one. It's just one that I don't reach for enough, and that's because this requires quite a bit of building up. Let me put it here. Maybe you can see better. Yeah, there we go. So this is really, really pretty, actually. It has. It was one of the first duochrome highlighters that I ever bought, but it's just, it's a little bit of difficult to pick up with a brush, uh, and you also don't really get a whole lot of product in here, I believe. It's only three and a half grams, so you don't get a whole lot of product either, so I feel you would go through this quite quickly. It is a stunning shade. It has that, like, pinky gold shift, so it's definitely something more unique in my collection as well but I don't reach for this enough, but I do really like it. It does bring me joy, let's put it that way. I have the Annabelle Holo, Hi Holo Lighter, that's what this is called, and this is in the shade Nova, and I do like this, don't get me wrong, but it is a bluish purple shift, and that's something that I don't wear on the daily, which is why it goes in the bottom. Again, let me see if I can swatch this a bit better for you. There you have it. It is a really, really pretty product. Again, most of these, I just decluttered my collection, so I will be liking all of these, so I just want to point that out there. Just because some of these are in the bottom doesn't mean that they are bad products. I enjoy all of these. Um, but there you have Nova. Quite possibly the biggest shock for most people, I think, is the fact that Champagne Pop by Becca is not my top fave. In fact, this is in my bottom list, and for good reason, because Champagne Pop is just much too dark for me. Um, and even though I really like the Becca formula, you will see Becca coming up a few times, but Champagne Pop is just much too dark. I can only wear this in the summertime. We have Mary Luminizer by The Balm. This is also in my bottom part of this list. Uh, not because it's not a great product. It was one of the first highlighters I ever bought. You can see there's a big dent in there too, but I really don't use this enough anymore. I just can't get rid of this because it was one of the first highlighters I ever owned. And whenever I swatch this, Oh, it's so nice. It's that really nice sort of like soft golden look. It's just that I have other gold highlighters that I now prefer a little bit more, but I still really like this product. It has a really nice texture, really, really nice product, which is why I still want to keep it, but it is in my bottom 10. Then we have the Ofra highlighter in Blissful. Ofra make a really, really excellent highlighter formula, I have to say. The only problem I run into with some of the Ofra highlighters is just they're, they're too intense. <laughs> uh, this is Blissful, which I knew would be too dark for me, but I also really am, I'm just intrigued by this rose gold. Let me see if I can swatch that for you right there. So this is much too dark, but it does have a little bit of like a lighter flash to it, which is again why I think this may work for me in the summertime. So this, I've I've kept this around. I bought it over the winter time in the Black Friday sale in a little mini, precisely because I knew it would be too dark, and because I like the formula. Um, I like this shade on me too, but I'm waiting for a little bit more color in my complexion. A product that I already know I can only wear in the summertime is this Dior highlighter. This is the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer in 001. This was limited edition a few years ago, and I've used this quite a bit, as you can see right there. But this is again one that I can only use this in the summertime. I was thinking, yeah, it's quite similar to Blissful, actually. It's quite a similar 
uh, shade, you could say. Um, so that's probably why these kind of shades just work on me better in the summertime. Another Becca one then, and this is another champagne split. Uh, I really wanted to have this for the blush. <laughs> this is Pomplamousse, and it the highlighter in here is called Prosecco Pomp. So that's the other Jaclyn Hill highlighter. And this is more of a gold, and I prefer this over Champagne Pop because it's just a little bit lighter. So I can get away with it a bit more, but I just forget I own these Champagne Splits. Again, I love this mostly in the summertime, so... There you have Prosecco Pop. A product that I need to just make sure I use more is the Laura Geller uh, highlighter, Baked Highlighter Duo in French Vanilla. Ooh, there we have a mirror. French Vanilla and Portofino. These are both stunning. Absolutely stunning. That's them on my fingers. And these have such a nice texture. Let me see where I can put them. That's Portofino, and that's French Vanilla. As you can see, this is just such a great, I love French Vanilla for setting my under eye. I just wanna have that in a single someday. Portofino, I thought was, wasn't going to work on me. But Portofino looks like it will not work on me because it has such a peachy undertone in the pan. But then, when you look at it swatched, it's a very nice light gold shade. I just kind of forget that I own it, but I do really like the product. Another Ofra highlighter. This is another one that's quite new to me. This is in the shade Pillow Talk. And I just knew that a lighter shade like this would probably just work a lot better for me than Blissful. Um, so let me put that right there. That is Pillow Talk. It's a very sort of icy pink, which is why I haven't used it a whole lot yet, because I was also really busy trying out other things. Uh, but this is a very, very stunning highlight. Another Becca highlight that I wanted to put in here is Rose Quartz. This is my newest Becca highlighter, and I just really haven't used this a whole lot, you could say. So that's why I'm putting Rose Quartz all the way more towards the bottom, because I just need to get more use out of this before I can really say much about this. But I really wanted to have this, because in terms of pinks, where, where am I gonna go? I'm gonna go right here. So there you have rose quartz, and I think in terms of like rosy, more rose gold kind of uh, highlighters, that this just suits my skin tone a lot better than some of these, but it still sort of fits in that same vein. It's just a lot paler, I feel. And then we're getting into quite favorite favorites kind of territory. Uh, this is one of my oldest highlighters. This was uh, a highlighter I bought before highlighter was a thing. Yes, that, that can happen. This is the Catrice highlighter from a limited edition collection called Enter Wonderland, and this is in the shade Fairy Dust. And this is how I found out that I really like peach-toned highlighters on me. This was the first peach-toned highlighter I owned. It's perhaps, in terms of highlight, like if you compare it to some of these like more intense things right here. This is like, you just want to laugh because it's very subtle, um, but it's right there. You can barely see it on my skin, but that's what I like about it. This is just such a great subtle peach toned highlighter. Mm, it's so, so gorgeous. Nars Albatross. This is one of those shades that you look at it in the pan and you're like, will that do anything? It looks like a matte white, <laughs> but if the light hits it, you can see the gold sheen that it has. And in terms of gold highlight, I really struggled a long time to find some things that worked on me because I'm so fair skinned. And I think that this is a gold highlighter that anyone with fair skin can get down with. It has a little bit of that white gold base, but Nars Albatross is not my favorite white gold highlighter. I've got better ones that I like more that are much more intense than this. Peach toned highlighters then. I wanted to try some and this is the Milani, what is this called? Luster Light Highlighter in the shade Hypnotic Lights. I had to hunt this down. As far as I know, this was limited edition. So I don't think you can find this anywhere anymore. But this is a really nice sort of like duochrome peach. Mm -hmm. And it has a pretty thick almost creamy texture to it as well. Uh, let me swatch it right there. And it's just, it's a really nice one. It's a little bit more subtle, 
but it has that peachy pink shift to it, which is why it's very special, but it's also a newer one to my collection, which is why it's not higher up on the list because I haven't used it enough. Ofra Rodeo Drive. I really wanted to buy or try an Ofra highlighter a while ago, and then uh, I actually wanted to get Blissful, but that was out of stock. So I decided to go for um, Rodeo Drive instead, and this, is, oh, this is just stunning. This is so pretty. In terms of gold highlights, again, I, I'm not a big fan, but there's just something about this that really made me fall in love. It is a little bit like too noticeable on my skin though, because the gold in this is, it, there's definitely like a yellow undertone to it. So again, more of like a summertime thing for me than anything else, but I do really enjoy that. I told you I had other more favorite white gold highlighters and this is one of them. This is Annabelle's Perfect Glow Highlighter in the shade Topaz. I got this in a swap. This is a Canadian brand and this is, oh, this is so pretty. You may see that I've only had this for a short while but I already have quite a big dent in the middle because this is absolutely stunning. It definitely is like the more intense version of Albatross. It has more of a white base to it, but that's why I love this so much. This works really well on my skin year round. Then my very first ever Becca highlighter was Pearl. And this is the only true white highlighter that I currently own. And that is also why this is not higher up on the list. Again, I love Becca formula, but because this is so white, and so icy, I feel it may be actually a little bit too pale. It definitely highlights on my skin. This was one of the very first highlighters where I felt like, oh yeah, that definitely highlights something on my skin here. Uh, it's very pretty, but I just don't really wear this tone a lot. But it's Becca, and that's why I can't get rid of it. Moving on then to LA Girls Strobe Light Strobing Powder. This is in the shade 110 Watt. And I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but there's a lot of powder kick up around this and this is very well used indeed because this is my favorite more like white gold highlighter i think this may actually be a little bit darker than yeah this is a little bit more yellow a little bit more gold than the annabelle but they are very close um, these are really really nice i really like this la girl formula and i think that more people should be raving about this, which is why I push it up a little higher than the Annabelle, because I just think that this is a great product with a really, really stunning formula. My number 16 would be this, my newest highlighter, the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Highlighter in a Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. I really wanted to try a Fenty Beauty highlighter. They just aren't available over here, which makes it a bit of a shame because they're difficult to find. So I picked this up when I was in London, and to be quite honest, I've only put it on my face like once or twice, so I can't say too much about this. So this would be, let me see, the more, less intense side is Lightning Dust, and then that is Fire Crystal right here next to each other. And I really like these. They are a little bit more on the champagne side, but it has a little bit of a peach undertone. I definitely think that if you have light skin and you're looking for a light champagne, that these are quite possibly the best. Another Annabelle highlighter, the last one. This is another one of those holo lighters, and this is in a shade Pegasus. And this was one of those things I was like, will it look good on me? But it is like a peachy pink tone shifting duochrome highlighter. And this is gorgeous. I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh, there we go. You see that? It is absolutely stunning. And on my face, it's magic. It's like unicorn pee in a highlighter. Then we're moving on to my one and only MAC highlighter. And this is Show Gold, and I'm putting this in at number 14 because I do feel that I have other shades that work better on me. But this was one of those highlighters that just intrigued me the minute I looked at it. It's one of their extra dimension highlighters. And when you look at this in a pen, you might think, Micah, that is going to be way, way too dark for you, which is also what I thought. But I decided to bite the bullet and just give it a whirl. 
And this is a gold. Ooh, let me put it back. This is a gold that shifts pink. This is very similar to fire crystal, actually. It's got a little bit more pink to it, I'd say. Unlucky number 13 would be the Physician's Formula Butter Highlighter in the shade Pearl. I really like this. And I like this because it has a really unexpected color to it. Um, it is, like, it looks white in the pan, but I was expecting this to look white on my skin. So I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but in real life, this has, again, like that pinky gold shift to it, which for a very light shade like this is very unique, but just a little bit more amazing at spot number 12 is Hippo by Colourpop. This is the same texture as Pearl by um, Physicians Formula. It's definitely sort of like that cream to powder kind of texture, but I just prefer the shade of this. This is one that I will actually actively seek out in my stash, in my collection, to wear. Because it has a very, very nice sort of like pinky purpley shade to it. And uh, as we're uh, climbing to the top of the ladder, you will find that this is one of my favorite shades for highlighter. Milani, the Afterglow highlighter in Strobe Light? No, Strobe Light highlighter in Afterglow, I think. I think Afterglow is a shade name. This is such a really nice, fair-skinned highlighter. It's mm, quite delicious. I really like these. I, it looks like I haven't used this a lot, but it's a bit similar as with those like rose blushes that they do. You can use this a ton and the pattern just won't wear down. This is a little bit more... Well, should I say subtle? I'm not sure whether I would really describe this as subtle. Let me put it here. Uh, but it's definitely a little less intense, but it's very, very nice. Talking about wearable everyday highlighters then. This number. This is the Hourglass Strobe Light, Iridesc Iridescent Strobe Light, Ambient Lighting, Strobe Lighting Powder, whatever. These names are way too long. And this has a very nice sort of like icy flair to it, but it is a little bit more peach. So it does blend in with my skin tone, I find. Whereas, where is it? This is Becca's Pearl, I think. And that just lies on top of my skin a bit more, whereas this has just blends into it a bit more. These strobe light highlighting powders got so much slack for being glittery and just a bit of a mess. But I found that it really depends what shade you get. Iridescent Strobe Light is absolutely stunning. Something that I think is a little bit overhyped because it took me some time to really get this to work for me is the Anastasia Highlighter, the Amrezi Highlighter, I should say, by Anastasia. This looks stunning. The packaging, gorgeous. The product, gorgeous. And then I tried applying it to my face and it wouldn't go on. <laughs> so I found that this is the kind of highlighter that has a little bit of a layer. So you can see where, perhaps see where I've used it the most. And I feel that if I really sort of like scrape a little bit with my brush into this product, it's fine. And I've been using this all month uh, in April and it looks very yellow and very gold in real life. But I feel that when you apply this to the skin, it just blends in and it's just glow. Like glow lit from within. It's very universal. Number eight, which again, I think people are going to hate me for this because nobody seemed to like these. But I don't know why, because I really enjoyed my Too Faced Love Light highlighter in the shade Ray of Light. I very deliberately didn't buy this in the lightest shade, which is like also a very white shade, but this is a peach toned highlighter. And when I decluttered my highlighter collection, I found out because my, one of my things, like I every year I think like, oh, what I would like to, what would I like to try this year? And one thing that I thought I would want to try was a peach tone highlighter. I already owned it. 
I just have forgotten a little bit about this. So now that I'm like, ooh, I really want to try peach tones, I am just really going after this. Again, people didn't like this for the same reason as the strobe light hourglass thing, because it has shimmer. But I have to say that when I apply this to my skin, it really doesn't have any noticeable glitter particles or anything. You can see them on in the pan, but I feel they blend away. And now that I'm swatching it next to the Amrezi, can you see that? They're, apart from the undertone, like this is a bit more gold and this is a bit more peach, but they have a very similar glow to it. Spot number seven. This is also a more recent find, but oh boy. Pixie by Petra. This is their glowy gossamer duo in a subtle sunrise. Again, a very rare occasion where I didn't go for the lightest shade in the range. With these two. Mm. Glass, like glass, let me tell you. Um, it comes with two shades, a more champagne-y pink shade and a more peach. And especially that champagne-y shade, that one right there, can you see, like, I, you can just see what I like, right? Right there. Um, that is, like, my kind of highlighter. The peach one I haven't tried a whole lot, but again, I was trying to go for that peach look, so this is one that I wanted to try out more over the summertime, because I feel that this is more of like a, like, where is it, summertime sort of thing, see? Top six. And the only reason why this didn't make it into my top five, because th this is top five material, but I had to, I had to be tough here, guys, is because I just, I just like the other ones a little bit better, and they have been longer standing favorites for the most part, but except for one. It's my Becca Vanilla Quartz Highlighter. I went absolutely crazy for this. I bought this and then just didn't wear it a whole lot because it seems quite yellow in the pan. And I was like, uh, I like it, but I'm not really sure whether it looked nice on me. I was so wrong to put this to the side so, for so long because the minute I start using this, I was like, yep, give me more. Top five. And we're starting with subtle highlights because I like me a good everyday highlight, and one of my favorites is by Kiko, and this is their Glow Fusion Powder Highlighter in the shade 01. I'm not sure what the shade is called, because they never put it on their packaging, but this is a very nice light gold, um, but a very subtle one. So in terms of like, if you put this next to Becca, it will probably look like a bit chalky, but this is just really nice for everyday, this is just if I don't want to go for something so intensely glowing. But I don't think I reach for it as much as Dandelion Twinkle by Benefit. This is another one of those products that a lot of people are like, it doesn't do enough. But sometimes, people, that's exactly what you want. It looks quite powdery on your finger, but then... It's right there. Do you see that it's very similar to the Kiko one, but just perhaps a little bit more glowy? I mean, oh, I just really, really like that shade. I'm going to be showing you my top three. Can you guess what made it into the top three? It's all high-end. I do have to apologize for that. First up, top three, number three, Urban Decay Aura. This has gotten so much love. Can you see? There is a dent in there. Oh boy. And this is just, I know that everybody liked this. Most people, I think, went for Sin, which is the champagne. But when I, when these came out, I went to the store and I just saw Sin. Let me swatch the top three together right here. Uh, Sin would be too dark for me. Aura. Oh, look at that. This is so nice. And then we have my two, my top two. And number two would be Nars's Fort de France. Now I said that most of what's in my top five is definitely stuff I've had for longer, but this made it very quickly into my top five. I only got this last fall and I've already, look at that, look at that dent. Oh my, like I've used this so much in terms of texture, finish, ease of use. This is one of the best highlighters 
on the market today. Of course, it swatches horribly now. Oh, there we go. Look at that. And this is just one of those highlighters that the more you buff it into the skin, the more it starts to shine. And then, drum roll please, my top favorite highlighter, Becca Prismatic Amethyst. This is uh, very well used. Because of the pattern, I don't think you can really see it from that distance, but this has gotten some love. Um, there's definitely a dent here. Um, this is pretty much the same as Urban Decay's Aura. Wait, let me see where I need to swatch this. I can't see it. Oh, here. Let me put it right there onto my arm. As you can see, this is Aura. That's Prismatic Amethyst. Again, they're very similar. I can wear this year round, no worries. I can chuck this on. I can make it super intense and glowy. I can tone it down by applying a little less. This is just my perfect highlight shade. And that, that is why it deserves the number one spot as well. So those are all of the highlighters that I own and that's how I would rank them. Please let me know in a comment down below if just what, what is your favorite highlighter? I would be very curious to know. And without further ado, thank you very much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe. I'm currently doing five videos during the work week. So from Monday through Friday, there's new content going live just for the month of May. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.